moms and dads and welcome to this episode of Today's Parent where we endeavor not only to connect you with experts but with parents just like you and me. Today we are going to have something so exciting for you. We have a father in studio to share his fatherhood journey. His name is Ted Moy, a brand new father who's going to share his fatherhood journey so far. Ted Moy. Yes. A pleasure to have you on Today's Parent. Thank you. Thank you. How are you? I'm good. You good? good? Yes. Brand new father. I'm telling you. In fact, before we talk about your fatherhood journey, let's yeah. talk about your pregnancy journey, which is not you, but madams. How yes. was the experience like for you guys? People have different uh, views and perceptions on uh, the pregnancy journey. Mm. But for me, I would say it was one of the best experiences, nine months experience. Really? Journey of, yes, yes. How so? Um, as people talk about it, uh, we didn't have those mood swings, we didn't have... Uh, crazy, Cravings. cravings. None of those. No, 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 no. It was just a normal, just a normal, a normal journey. It's from yeah. month one to month nine. One to nine, yes. yes. Wow. Yes. How about the bathing experience? Wow. <laughs> wow. The baby came a week earlier. Okay. We are not. We okay. We are ready for it. Mm -hmm. um, so what we did uh, on the day of delivery, we had gone for the usual checkup. Right. The last one. And then the doctor said, no. You can't go He home. just called me on the side and told me, look, you'll be a father in three hours. Wow. And I quit. I'm not even ready. Next thing, three hours later, we went in and then I held my baby. Wow. It was one of the most beautiful experiences I've ever gone through. I can imagine. Yes. But it was yes. not a, a, an emergency. No, 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 no. Okay. No, no. Okay. The doctor said, I think she's ready. Let the baby come. I wonder, I wonder yeah. how she felt in that moment that this is going to happen now. You're thinking about your hospital bag, you need to yeah. tell your mom, you need people you want to call. I wonder how it was for her. It was chaotic. But we sat down and decided what are we going to do first. The bag is ready. Mm -hmm. Our parents don't know about You're it. You're organized. <laughs> yes, of course, of course, of course. So what we did is um, we walked to the labor ward. And uh, no, once she got admitted, now that's when I started calling people. Doing the phone calls. Yes, okay. I call my mom, I call her mom, and then the brothers and the father. Okay. Yes. Reflecting on your, you know, your fatherhood journey so far, yeah. how did you prepare? How did you prepare? How did you guys prepare? But let's focus on you, the father. Yeah. How did you prepare? Um, I was reading a lot on fatherhood. Mm. Um, father, fatherhood 101. Um, online? Yes. Mainly online? Yes. Yes. It was all online because every person I spoke to had their own different views <laughs> and their own different experiences. What were the men telling you? The men were telling me, you know, it's the worst thing ever. Just really? run away, yeah, come back, go to another country, come back after nine months, come back after one year. Like, no, 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 I can't do that. I'll be here for her. And yeah, just the whole giving her the whole 100% support mm -hmm. that she needed. So the one yes. thing for you that worked at the beginning is preparing yourself with information. Exactly, yes. Information is power. And also having those apps. Hmm. Yes. What kind of apps? You mean um, you have like what, dad apps? Yeah, there's some. Parenting there's apps. an app called uh, ProDaddy that prepares oh, you for... It's called ProDaddy. Yes, called, uh, ProDaddy. And also there's one for, it's called um, Baby Center. I think that's what ah, you Baby Center, most of us know Baby Center. Yes, yes. Very informative to apps. Interesting. Yeah. Yes. You really yes. are today's parent because I think a lot of us are so old school. We just mm -hmm. dive into mm -hmm. it. But you prepared yourself with information. You had apps. Yes. How is it? I wonder what the app does for a father. What's on the app? The app prepares you. For example, it tells you mm. uh, that maybe give you an estimate on the date of conception. And then now you trace from there. This week, you might see these changes ah. from the mom. This is how you're supposed to react to these changes. Yeah. So for these guys who are telling you that it was terrible for them, maybe mm -hmm. if they prepare themselves with information, yeah. knowing what happens week after week, then it would have been easy for, you know, for them to cope maybe. Exactly, yes. Mm. yes. I'll ask you a question. Did you guys have, mm -hmm. because a lot of today's parents have a doula, a midwife they walk the journey with, was that an option for you guys? Yes, we, had, you did? Yes, we had a doula. How was that helpful? Um, we got one towards the end of the pregnancy, like on the last trimester. Had you ever heard of a doula before? No, it was the first time. <laughs> so when you're, when you're told, babe, you're going to see a doula, what did you think? What came to mind? <laughs> uh, like, what, what does this person do? Mm. Is a person that who cooks? 
Uh, what does this person do? Right. And she was like, no, this person is going to guide me through through the pregnancy journey. Okay. Yeah, and you used to see her every every Saturday. She used to come home. Every Saturday. Every Saturday. Yeah. Before the baby came. Yes, on the last trimester. For like three months. Yeah. Why? Just to I, I didn't want Madame to have that. Um, that fear of the unknown. Mm. I needed someone to guide her, someone who's done this for a long period of time. Okay. Yeah, telling her if you feel pain, uh, you wear lower back, this is what you're supposed to do. And as you, as a, as a, a father to be, this is what you need to be doing to her. When so, this what, were thing happens. what were you told? What were you told? I was told a lot of things. What kind of things? <laughs> uh, how to control, how to react when she's emotional a bit. Really? Yeah, when she's stressed. What did she say? What did your doula say? Like rub her back. Oh, um, you know most of her backs are rubbed in the hospital. So this started from home. Yes, from home. Lucky girl. Yeah. If she is tired, <laughs> this is what you need to do to her. Yeah. If you see a change in emotions or feelings, mm. this, this is how we should react. Interesting. Yes, and also on the diet part as well. What did she say about diet? The diet part. There's some things that were told. If you, you eat this, it will be easy. On um, the contractions will be that really? painful. Yeah. Okay. And it's actually worked. I wonder, like, which foods? What did she tell you? What kind of foods? Uh, there's something we did called, okay, for the first time I had it, uh, soya milk. I've never had, okay, I've heard of soya milk, but I didn't know soya milk helps you with... Yeah, it does help, according to the doula. Yes. Okay, yes. okay. So the midwife came for the last three months mm -hmm. and prepared you guys for life with baby in just the last chapter of, of the pregnancy part. Yes. Okay. Yes. I'm just wondering, so when you're going to the hospital, of course, it was, there was nothing to panic about. You no, were no, no. ready. It was normal. It was ready. a normal checkup, the last checkup, before now baby comes on the due date. Okay. Yeah. So for a dad who's watching right now, what do you think is the role of a father during pregnancy, during the birthing process? What do you think is the role of the, of the father? If there's anything they didn't say at the men's conference, this is mm. the point where you can share. Oh, yeah. <laughs> They didn't talk about this, but... Um, they didn't talk about it. No, 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 no. no. <laughs> They're supposed to be talking about it. But the most important thing, the most important thing a father can do at that time is support. Be there for her. Always be there for her. If she mm -hmm. wakes up at night, she moves a lot just to kind of tell her, being what's up, what's happening? Please, what's going on? Take her to work. Pick her in Take the evening. Take her to work? Yeah. Like drive her to work? Drive her to work, yeah. She's a VIP. She's yeah. a VIP. Mm -hmm. Make her feel special. Make her feel wanted and loved. So my question yeah. to you, Ted, why you, it looks like, you know, when you got into this space, you're very intentional about the kind of partner you're going to be, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. about the kind of parent you're going to be. Yeah. Is this how you are raised or is it something you saw with your parents? Uh, it's how I was raised mm. and uh, also seeing how people behave out there. Like, no, I want to be like so-and-so, I just want to be that one of one person. Yes. So what did your father do, do different that impacted on you? Um, honestly, growing up, I didn't see my father that much. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But I always see, I had a godfather. Okay. Yeah, that guided me towards this how you treat family, this is how you should treat women, and this is how you should be a father in the future. How did he tell you, your godfather, mm -hmm. how we should treat women? What did he tell you? I'm curious. Respect them. Yeah. Respect women. women. Respected, yeah, <laughs> and honored. You know, we talk about respect and honor and uh, all these nice things. But when it comes to doing them, what does it mean? You know, to honor your partner. Mm -hmm. I know you've mentioned, you know, when uh, during the night, wake up with her, yeah. find out how she's doing. Yes. What else do you think fathers can do? Listen to her. Most men don't listen. Mm. Okay, sorry, men are there. <laughs> it's true, we don't listen. So most, I, I just want to even give you a placard so you can say it louder. <laughs> most men don't listen. Yes. Most men don't listen. So it's something that they can work on? Yes. And something that I worked on. Okay, I was, yeah. Very deliberate uh, about it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but because to, that, to that point whereby I was like, you know what? This is, this is the mother of my generation. Now. Mm. I need to take care of her. I need to respect her. I need to show her love. That's wonderful. Yes. That's wonderful. Yes, yes. So let's take a short break, Ted, and then when we come back, we'll continue the conversation. Okay. All right. All right. In our episode today, we have Ted Moy, who is sharing his fatherhood journey. He's the father of a beautiful baby daughter who's uh, three months old at the moment. And he shared so far how his experience has been. We are going to take a short break and we'll be back right after this. Mm -hmm. 
Welcome back to this episode of Today's Parent where we are having a conversation with Ted Moy, who's the epitome of today's father, switched on, digital, sharing his journey, you know, as a father of a beautiful three-month-old. Ted, yes. I want to ask you a question. Before you became a dad, and now yeah. that you are so deliberate and intentional about the kind of father you are, the kind of parent you're going to be, what are the myths that you had, you know, about fatherhood and, and manhood? First, they said, first thing I had was, you should not go into the delivery room. You should never go into the delivery room. Second, you should wait, not... Wait, 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 yes. why? <laughs> it's, why? Not, it's not for men to be there. So men are not supposed to be in the delivery room. That's what people have been saying. It's were you there? Clearly, yes, you, I, I was I there. I suspect you were there. Yes, I was there. And it is, it is a fact that you didn't faint. No. There's no proof. <laughs> no. I, I didn't faint. <laughs> you didn't faint. I didn't faint. Well done. Yes. How was the experience like for you? <sighs> I... I don't, Oh my God! Um, <laughs> it was eye opening. Eye opening in what it way? It was eye opening. In what way? What you ladies go through? Mm. Respect. It gives you a new respect for women, yeah, isn't yeah. it? And gives you a whole new perspective as to how you look at a mother. So yes. can you imagine in that time when a woman is just by herself, not even a guy being in that delivery room, but in that mm. process during that process. It can be very lonely, eh? Yeah, it can be. Yeah. It can be. It can be. Yeah. So number one, our, our men, yes. our dads should not be in the delivery mm -hmm, room. Mm -hmm. That's the one myth that you had. Yes. Which other one? The other one was, once you go home, you should not cook. You should not once prepare you anything. Once you go home, You why? should not cook for. You should not cook. I don't know. I don't know what, what traditions say about men cooking for their, for their um, <laughs> newborns and, um, <laughs> and their wives once they get babies. But... I wonder why. I, I, I don't know. I don't you, know. You know, this gives me, it takes me back to when I was young and my mother must have given birth to either our second last born or mm -hmm. one, of, mm -hmm. one of our siblings. Okay. And I remember my father was stuck at home with one of my uncles and clearly my mother could not come home um, oh. in that expected time. Uh -huh. He has these kids at home. We don't have a help. These children have to feed. Yeah. So he has to cook. And this is a guy of 1950s, 1960s. Wow. I remember him just closing the curtain with his brother in broad daylight, you know, boiling that water to make ugali. But nobody no can see them. Nobody, they didn't want any neighbor passing outside there and they're sitting in the kitchen. No way. That is, I, that memory for me stuck for mm -hmm. a very long time. Mm -hmm. And that's how men were raised, that they were not supposed to be in the kitchen. And yes. that's how men yes. have been raised, that the kitchen is for women. For women. So for you, you want to do it a bit different. I, I did it differently. Because um, once we went home, my mom came to be with us mm. for a couple of weeks. And I was always in the kitchen with her. Like, mom, you know, this is what, this is what <laughs> mama loves. This is what she likes. That she likes her meat done. Oh, wow. Yes, yes. And your mom didn't chase you away from the kitchen? No, no, she was like, you know her better. So How just nice guide me on how I'm going to do it. How nice is that? Yes, yes, yes. How nice is that? Yes, and if mom is holding the baby and talking to, to the the new mom, yeah, and I'm there cooking, uh, cooking up a storm in the kitchen nice for, for my three loved ladies at that time. Oh, that's those are nice, uh, yeah. nice memories. Yes. Which yes. other myth can you think of that you are told? You know, sitting with your friends, that didn't make sense later. They said um, there's this myth that says once the kid comes, mm. they should go. Both the mother and the baby should go to the mom's, not to the my in-laws' house to be Wait, taken care of. Wait. So once the baby comes, mm. you and your wife. No, my wife. Your and, wife? And my child now uh -huh. goes to my, to my mother-in-law's place. Not at your mom's house? No, not at, not not, at your mom's place? Not my mom's place, not my house. Really? Yeah. That's a new one. Yeah, I'd had people telling me that, oh, you know, now you have to put everything together and take to your in-law's place. I'm like, no. So from the hospital, goes, straight to the in-laws? Yes. That's different. I've never yeah. heard of that one. Yeah. It's there. Some cultures do it. So you decided from the hospital to my house. Straight to my house. <laughs> yes. You're my people. I'll take care, I'll take care of you. I hear you. Yes. Which other yes. myth? Which other myth have you have you heard of? Uh, so far, that's 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 it. That's pretty much it. Because I never want to. I never wanted to listen to people. Mm. Yeah. I was like, I'm me. I'm one of one. So I'm going to do things my own way. I mentioned that. Yes. You come from the hospital. You guys have gone home. Now it's not uh, a family of two, it's a family of three. Three, yes. 
How different was it the first few days? Wow. We never used to sleep, first of all. <laughs> um, so it's not like in the movies that they come home, they're sleeping and, you know, it's just a beautiful sight to look at. No, 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 no. It's, it's, it's very, very different from what they show in the movies. Because you're worried about all times, is she breathing? Wow. Is she okay? So you have to put, place your finger like on her nose. Like, oh, yeah, she's I fine. I thought it's only mothers who do that. Mm -hmm. Even fathers do yeah. that. Like you just sit close to where, where she's sleeping. And now watch on the, the baby. And yeah, watch on that, her. On that bassinet and just look at her. <laughs> oh, wow. Yeah, she turns and like, okay, she's good. Yeah. So yeah. at what time do you sleep? Um, <laughs> mostly in the morning. You know that, that period that you get for paternity? You give yourself paternity maybe two weeks, three weeks. Mm. I used to sleep in the morning. Speaking of which, Ted, yeah. do you think paternity, this paternity leave is important for dads? It is very important. How can a dad make the best use out of it, not to use those two weeks or whatever mm -hmm. length they have mm -hmm. to be in and out of the house, car wash, and mm -hmm. you know, just being sent for errands. Mm -hmm. How do you, as a dad, make those moments count during paternity? I believe that's, that creates a bond mm -hmm. between the three of you. And also you need to help her. Because you see, everyone says, hey, right now, the house help is not ready to hold the baby yet. So it's up to you as a parent to take care of that. Right. And then also you need to know how babies are taken care of. You need to know how diapers are changed, you know, know how babies are held when bathing time, how, how you change your, the clothes, how often you should do the diaper change happen. <laughs> All those things happen in the first two to three weeks. So diaper duty, you are set there, you are good at that. Yeah, yeah. So you know the kind of dad where you hand over the baby when you know when the baby poops, somebody check this baby, no. no Switch no, 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 no. on, you change the baby. Yes. Bathing the baby? That's, that's my duty. I do that every day. Wow. Yeah. What a way to bond. Every that's single wonderful. day. For the last three months. That's wonderful. Yes. That's yes. wonderful. So yes. literally you've watched her grow, the smile and everything. Yeah. That's beautiful. Yeah. Feeding her, it's still mom. Yeah, but now we're trying bottle. Hmm. Yeah. So she expresses yeah. your help in the feeding. True, true. Okay. Uh, especially at night. Okay. Yeah. So you tell the dads out there to see how they can take advantage of their paternity leave and mm -hmm. make, you know, make some nice memories for the two of them, three of them. No matter how many they are. Yes. yes. Okay. Take time. Take time to to bond with her, uh, the mother, because uh, you know she's been through a lot. Yeah. Uh, nine months is. It's not a short time. It's not, it's not a, a short, short time. time. Yeah. And also get to know your newborn. Mm, yeah, yeah. Beautiful. Yes. Uh, speaking of which, the question before was you and Madam, mm -hmm. you are top of her priority list. Yes. How do you, as a new dad, your first baby? deal with being at the bottom of the list at the moment, if I can put it uh, that way. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it, it, I, um, now, what I've done is I've come to accept my position right now. <laughs> You've come to accept your position? <laughs> yes, come to accept my position. And uh, my position now, I'm the last person in that house they think about. Mm -hmm. And it's a good thing. It's a good thing. As long as they're happy, they're bonding well, mm -hmm. they're growing, it's a, it's, a, it's a good position to be. You just sit At the bottom of the list things. for now. Yes, for now, yes. I wonder when you guys are sitting with other with other new dads, mm -hmm. when you are talking about the change of position, mm -hmm. how are the other dads, how do they cope, by the way? <laughs> Is it something that bothers men that suddenly they are not the the focal focus, you know, we are not focusing on them as much? Yes. Does it bother them? It does. It does? Yeah. In fact, one of my, one of my uh, best friends... Uh, we got the baby maybe say, two weeks apart, yeah? mm. and uh, we always sit and talk and say how we've been uh, neglected <laughs> and relegated. No more love oh. being shown. All the attention is on this on baby. tiny, beautiful little thing that has come. <laughs> You're trying to say this is what I want. I'm like, no, I want to baby fast. Baby comes first. Everything is baby, baby, baby fast, baby yeah. fast, baby fast. The baby, the also, baby, when the you baby. it comes to you now on your side. It's always baby first, baby first, then mom second. Yeah. So it's something you guys have come to accept? Right now, yes, and we are comfortable with that. You know, as you speak, there's a question from uh, George from Kisumu. George has sent us you know, a question on our 22999 number. He's saying, if, if you know of any support groups mm -hmm. that men, especially new fathers, can mm -hmm. be part of, mm -hmm. are there any? Have you heard of, uh, heard of any here in Kenya? No. A WhatsApp group, a Facebook group for new dads? You know, we don't, we, uh, at the moment there's, because I've tried, oh. there's there nothing for new dads. But uh, if you try, there are a couple of sites hmm. that's, that people meet and exchange ideas. Yeah. Like what, an international site? Yeah. Why do I suspect Baby Center? Baby Center also, that, that, that one also, yeah. 
Uh, so baby and also has a, a place for a forum for dads. Yes. Interesting. Yes. 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 We need to get yeah. there, you know, just for local content and for us mm -hmm. to connect on that local experience. Yes. Maybe you need to start that. And you also and George. Thing is, <laughs> no, for, for George, uh, if you're a new dad, uh, this is what I'll suggest. Uh, look for someone else who's a new dad as well, mm. maybe two or three people. Mm. And then now that way you share ideas. You, you become a support group for each other. Transitioning from, you know, your bachelorhood and being around the boys and, you know, those Fridays and Saturdays that were like holidays for you yeah. and getting into that frame of mind that I need to be there for my lady and this young person or these young people. Yeah. How can a guy do that? Because I know for a new father somewhere, Mm -hmm. It's very hard to separate from that life to this new life. True. It's a total shock. True, true, true. How do you do that? I can start say from, let me give you a timeline of since, since the second trimester. Mm -hmm. Now that's when I started seeing where upper things are thick. Now. <laughs> so I used to get home every day. Uh, no more drinks mm. after work. Every day by nine in the house. Every day by nine you're at home? Yes. Which was for you something new? Very, very new. And then towards now the last trimester, now that's when I used to take her to work every morning. Wow. Okay, mostly. Uh, and then pick her in the evening. And then make sure by seven you're at home. Because she works, she used to work late hours. So by the time she gets home, there is food ready. And, uh, made by you? Yes, made by me. If there's Father Heaven, you're going to <laughs> go to that Father Heaven. Well done. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Thank you. And then now it comes now when baby came. So now, whatever you do, I make sure I'm home by six, because that's when now the baby takes her bath. So I have to be home by six. It doesn't matter where I am, but I have to be home by six. Whatever I'm doing, I have to be home by six. Wow. Yeah. And then be there, and then uh, maybe after baby shower takes takes a bath, mm. um, she feeds, she goes to sleep, and now you can call your boys like uh, Mko. Yeah. Have a drink or two, and then make sure back in the house by by twelve, twelve thirty, when she wakes up again, so that Mama can sleep, and then you can. Take over, rocking her to back to sleep. And you're telling me, her. you Ted, as a, as a new dad, you're able to discipline yourself to that level and be home at those times. Yes. And help. Yes. And be in a frame of mind to help. True. Wow. True. Very, very yeah. rare. Mm. So as you're. I waiting, don't know. I think I think it's cause it's a girl. So you, you want know? to do it a bit different. Yeah. And you see, now this is my mother. I'm taking care of. Hmm. Like, so you feel that extra responsibility because it's a girl. I believe so. Okay. But I think it might change if I get a boy, or oh, it might still be the same. How many kids are you guys hoping for? <laughs> Four. Four? Yes. But she wants, she wants three, but there will be an oops on that. Yeah. <laughs> so we leave room for that as yes, well? Yes, yes, okay. yes. Okay, so as you're winding up, Ted, mm -hmm. your dreams and hopes for your daughter. What are your dreams and aspirations for her? Wow. I have a lot. Mm. But I think the main one is... Um, I want her to be someone who is very respectable of people. I want her to be loving of family. I want her to know God and get close to God as uh, as early as possible. Um, I want her to be well educated. Like the mother is very is well educated. Yes, um, I want her to appreciate whatever little that she gets. Anything little, it's just appreciate whatever she gets. That's wonderful. Yes, and also give her everything that I never got as a child. Wonderful. Yes. Your final tip for a father, a new father who's watching, mm -hmm. what can you leave them with? Be there for your partner. It's, it's, this process is, it's not, it's not easy. Mm -hmm. They are emotionally drained. And if you're not there for her, it's, it's not good. It's not good for her. Yeah. Thank you, Ted. So just be there. Be there for her. Thank you very much. And all the best. Thank you so much. As you start your journey from number one to number four and yes. any other. We wish you the very best. Thank you so much. Thank you for coming. All right. Thank you. I hope you've enjoyed today's episode where we had new father Ted Moai sharing his journey, especially as a new father. I hope you've taken something from what you have shared and you do the best that you can. These kids grow up so fast. Let's be intentional. Let us be deliberate. If you're a new father who's watching or just a parent who have an amazing parenting journey, reach out to us on SMS 22999 and we'll be happy to consider to share your story. I have been your host, Christine Casina, and this has been today's parent. We've been here in studio at Little Cribs, where you come to if you're looking for kids' furniture, which are exciting, beautiful, durable, and affordable. And if you're looking for parenting resources, go to www.supermamas.co.ke. Thank you so much for watching. See you next time.